And I'm going to click live now. Ready? Start, John. Ready? Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Friday's um, session of going over watercolors, etc. I'm pleased to have um, Raffaele in the room, who I'll introduce in a moment. He's going to be going over triads. Um, he'll be able to answer your questions. Um, I did have something really briefly to show you before I cut over to uh, Raffaele. And this was a question yesterday regarding the lunar series. And do they behave the same as the lunar black? And so what I did is I took all the lunars. This is lunar black, lunar blue, lunar earth, lunar red rock, and lunar violet. I introduced yellow to them. You'll see here that the yellow, Hansa yellow medium, moves away from the lunar black. Actually, the lunar black moves away from the Hansa yellow. Very similar to a degree with the lunar blue, and that's because they're both um, have PBK black 11, PBK 11. Lunar black is totally PBK 11. Lunar blue, um, majority PBK 11 with some PB 15. Lunar earth is pigment brown or pigment uh, brown 11. So not so much moving away. Lunar red rock is pigment red 101. Not very much moving away. And then we have lunar violet, which has PV15 and some PVK11. Again, PVK11 is secondary pigment in this particular color. And there's some slight movement. But we still find the most movement in the lunar black and the lunar blue. So it was a great question. I wanted to show, I said I would show that to you. So I'm just showing that to you now. And so with that, now I get the pleasure of introducing Raffaele, who's with us here today. He's in the uh, studio. Um, Hello. Raffaele, how are you today? Hello, fine. Fine, thanks. So, Raffaele is going to be showing you uh, how he picks triads. I'm going to ask Raffaele to give his website, if he'd be so inclined to do so, so you can go see his artwork, et cetera, and ask him questions. And with that, Raffaele, I'm going to ask you to please take over. Yes, thank you. So um, I think, uh, hello everybody from Italy. I, I would like to um, show the, the, the history that my, sorry. Um, the history of, uh, my history of trials. So I'm showing uh, a little palette uh, from the 90s, which is a mix from uh, different firms of, of, um, of colors. Uh, they are all uh, uh, half pounds. And uh, I try to understand how, how to mix every, every color. I need using only a triad, the color triad. And this is my first uh, experiment in, in palette, was a cigar. Uh, box. Then in uh, in 210 or 11, I I bought the first Daniel Smith colors from England, from England distributor, and this is the uh, my first Daniel Smith palette. This one, and these are the swatches, which were I still use these colors very much and. Uh, uh, it is Monte Amiata Natural Siena, uh, which I use as uh, its main yellow, uh, Italian Burnt Siena, French Ultramarine, Lunar Earth, and Lunar Black. These were the first five Daniel Smith colors I, I bought and still use. This is another page of swatches. Uh, trying to, to show uh, all the main mixes one can make using this triad, which is Montemiata, Italian Bronsiena, French Ultramarine. And these are, these are some mixes of, of, the, of the, the three more uh, Lunar Earth, like here, and uh, uh, Lunar Black, like, like here. French ultramarine and lunar black 
gives us um, a color very similar to sodalite, almost. This is this is history, and then. Then I was asked to prepare my docker when we, when we met with uh, John and Catherine Fabiano, uh, Fabiano in Aquarello some years ago, a few years ago. And uh, I studied the, which colors I could use for a good uh, triad on the, my docker. And this is one of the experiments and, uh, and I was trying out to uh, to understand which colors could go in a in a 16 color palette, organizing in triads this way. Of course, uh, triads are uh, fixed. Triads are the three on a line, but of course, I also often um, mix one yellow from from this line, one red or so-called red in the central line, and, uh, and my blues and at least one, one green, which is, if I have to choose one, only one green is Jedi green, uh, genuine green. Okay, and this, this is, the, these are the, the first watches I did. Then I try to, to, to understand how this, uh, this palette works. So uh, this is the, the split triad, which is cool, warm, yellow, cool, warm, red, cool, warm, blue. And uh, I now use this palette and a good work, a good way to to understand how how these palettes work, at least for me, is to to mix in horizontal. So uh, a good way to to understand how the the three colors work together is to mix all the colors this way. I hope you can see well. So the, the, the question is, uh, I, I don't know if you ever used a triad and I don't know which kind of triads uh, are you using, if, if any. Uh, and uh, some somebody asked me why you you use triads. I have some answers if you want, uh, because it is a, a very good exercise for, for learning colors, uh, because uh, it's good to, to give uh, oneself some rules, then you can break, of course, and the restrictions. So uh, the triad is uh, maybe the, the most restricted palette. palette. Uh, you can compare uh, the, the triad with, uh, with music, with harmony. You know that harmony is based on, uh, on a triad of, of tones, of notes. Uh, it, it can be major tones, which, which could be uh, a brilliant, a brilliant in color triad. And the minor, which could be a muted color triad, music and, uh, and in art. Uh, and uh, restricting the, the possibilities is um, it's like playing the blues. When you play the blues, I am also a musician. When you play the blues, uh, you, you have three chords, three main chords, the first grade, the fourth grade, and the, and the fifth grade. If you, you, if you play the blues with uh, full chords, normal chords, you have a palette of, of colors, of, uh, of sounds. The more uh, different uh, and the more variation you introduce in, in, the, in, the, in the three chords of the blues, you, have, you go uh, to, 
open, to widen the, the, your palette, your musical palette, and you have uh, some strong variations uh, depending on how you, which, which chords you, which notes you add to these three notes which is the same we do in uh, in colors so blues becomes more more jazzy let's say uh, and the, the the last answer is uh, because uh, i use a, a palette a triad palette because it's, it's funny and if you ask me what a triad a color triad is i i would answer um, a, a color triad is any set of three colors. You have no rules. Uh, you can invent. You can create your your rules in uh, in setting up your your special triads. I hope somebody will uh, will show uh, in the future their their palettes as uh, as I often read on uh, on Instagram uh, Daniel Smith Instagram. Uh, and I and I share. I am happy to share the, the suggestions. So um, I can show one basic palette, which is nickel azure yellow, which is very very bright in um, when diluted and uh, stronger in mass tone. Something similar to Queen Acridon gold, but cooler. And uh, this is, uh, we have here Queen Acridon Lilac, which is a cooler version of uh, uh, permanent laser uh, and uh, uh, the classic uh, French ultramarine. This is uh, a sheet of, uh, of swatches. This is very, a very bright palette. Very muted one, which is very interesting, is the, the pastel. I call it subtle, subtle triad or pastel triad, which is uh, napple yellow, wisteria, and uh, lavender. Uh, these colors, two colors, uh, were launched in, in 217, if I am right. And but these colors are very weak or very subtle. Very, very low key. So sometimes I I needed uh, a punch in the in the gray in the in the dark colors, and sometimes I had, I had uh, French ultramarine, or paints the blue gray, or hematite genuine. So in this way, these colors be are becoming more muted or muted, also this way, and a little livelier here with French ultramarine. As an example of this, I can show this painting, which is the, the muted palette, and is uh, Naples yellow, wisteria, Lavender and a very little uh, French ultramarine to, ultramarine to give some more strength to the to the foreground and um, because it without the, the the dark color everything would be very hazy very fine very atmospheric but very similar in tone. When you need, when you need uh, at least one tone, you can use what I call uh, something like a split triad, which is, in fact, which is any triad more plus on one uh, color, one strong dark color like this. It is always a triad, but with some enrichment. So uh, in those days, it was uh, 217. I made the same subject, almost the same subject. This, uh, these were two demos I did. 
And this, this is the sun, sun palette, which is OC red gold, which is very, very striking color, very, very, very bright. Uh, Queen Acridon lilac and cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is a, a color I always have in my normal, normal palette. You can see the strong difference the palette makes, of course. If you want, I can show some more samples. And then I can I can go with some live on sample. This is a very quick and, and small. You see, this is very small. This is Quinacridon gold, Perilan maroon, and Indian throne blue, which is which is in my palette too. It's my my fourth choice. This one. And this is very small and quick uh, sketch I did. I, I seem to recall I also recorded for Facebook. Um, you can see you can mix very good greens also with French ultramarine if you use uh, uh, nickel, azo, yellow. You have very, very bright greens which uh, resemble uh, somewhat uh, sub green, almost almost sub green, very beautiful um, violets mixing French ultramarine and with a green of lilac, of course. And um, if you mix all three, you have very good neutrals. And you have something which is very very similar, very near to full black. Let's call it, it is a chromatic black, but you can play, of course, with, with the, the, the quantities of, the, of each color. This is another, another very quick story. It is, I don't remember exactly, but it should be um, uh, raw sienna, natural sienna, Italian burnt sienna, and French ultramarine. It's very quick, no, no detail at all. This is a spot. John and Catherine, we remember, is uh, one of the, of the squares of uh, Fabriano. And uh, this is done also with uh, rose sienna, uh, Italian burnt sienna, and cobalt. Raffaele ci chiedono che tipo di carta usi. This is, this is uh, uh, all, all of these are. Uh, papers from uh, Fabriano is um, first I used the Lorenzo Santoni paper, which he doesn't produce anymore. And uh, now I'm using uh, Vice Versa Fabriano, which is, which is very good is uh, I use 200 for sketches and uh, and 300 grams for something more uh, particular. This is, this is an old kind. I, I suppose they don't produce any more of this kind of paper, but it's very similar anyway. And uh, this is the um, one of the sketches uh, I I shared. On the on also also ethel i suppose shared uh, this is this is not very uh, strict stride uh, if i remember well it is about uh, four or five colors uh, 
because when you are going uh, on the spot, we are painting on the spot, uh, I, I feel I need more blues. I, I don't care about the yellow, which is uh, uh, yellow earth. Um, the red is, uh, is red earth, uh, such as uh, Italian burnt sienna or uh, Venetian red. But I, very often I need two blues, uh, which, which are cobalt as a cool, medium cool, and, uh, and something more um, greenish like uh, phthalo blues. This is another another kind of uh, of Google. Very fine paper. One hundred percent cotton. And th these are the sketches I I shared in the last months. This is. Um, Goitite, goitite, brown ochre, uh, blue apatite, which is a very, very good uh, muted blue. I use it very much on, on, on certain atmospheres. And uh, I don't remember if uh, the, the black, the blackish is sodalite or, or lunar black, maybe lunar black. This is very small, you can see. This is a classic one, which is nickel azo yellow, perma permanent alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue. Not French ultramarine, but ultramarine blue, which gave, uh, gives uh, better greens, brighter greens. All of these uh, were painted uh, about in 30 minutes or, or 40 maximum. Raffaele? Yes? Can you give us, a, you had mentioned about a small demonstration. Can you show a demonstration to the viewers? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Fantastic. You're, by the way, your triads are beautiful. Some flowers for one time. Okay. This is Oriolene. I don't know if I pronounce it well. Yes. Oriolene? Yes. Yes. This is um, deep scarlet, which gives very natural red together, orange red. And you can choose permanent, no, a fellow blue green shade. And they, when they are mixed together, they give a very, very good neutral mix. is very, very useful uh, shadow tones. We can try a very, very small
some violet. Chiedono che pennello è? Questo è un pennello da Vinci Maestro numero 8. Polinski. Un'altra domanda è, questi paesaggi vengono da foto, plein air, o la tua immaginazione? Eh, questi vengono da... Um, this, this landscape, uh, imaginary landscape, but they come for close ob observations of my environment. Uh, mostly they are uh, Marche re region in Middle Italy, Central Italy. See, when you, when you use Oriolin and, uh, and the cool colors, it's difficult to, to have, um, to try to mix um, a very warm, very warm earth color, but you can, anyway, like this. Mi chiedono se puoi far vedere un momento la palette che stai usando, se la fai vedere un attimino. Yeah. Okay, this, I'm using these three colors and this is the, my usual palette. This is the, the muted ones, which are in, in a separate uh, space. And these are the, the, the colors I most commonly use. Raffaele, would you possibly substitute phthalo uh, green, green shade with phthalo red shade to keep all the colors slightly warmer? Yes, in fact, I, um, I, I usually use uh, the, the red shade uh, phthalo, like, like you can see in my usual palette, phthalo red shade. I, I don't like very much the the green shade which is too too greenish for me but gives very good um sunny skies summer skies uh, because if, if you dilute very much the, the phthalo um, green shade like this you have you have uh, a color very similar to cerulean natural to not not phthalo but Normal cerulean. This way, this gives the most the most uh, sunny sky I know of. But usually for skies, I use cobalt blue, which is my favorite one. Too strong. Cobalt is the, the right blues for, for almost everything. And this is the color of the, 
Italian football team. <laughs> now, with the with the rig, I can intensify some some darks and finish this this small sketch. This is a kind of um, landscape you can you can find in my area. You can go on forever, modifying and uh, adding. I always say it only depends on on the time you have for uh, for painting. How much time? About 20 minutes. I can show you another, another try. Gabriele, should be. No, we don't. We show my, my classic one, which is Monte Amiata Natural Siena, Italian Burnt Siena, very rich red, and French ultramarine. This gives a very, very natural uh, gray, which can go from cooler to warmer. And it gives very early shades of, of gray for clouds. One can substitute uh, Italian uh, natural sienna or Anyway, burn sienna with Venetian red, which is redder, cooler. And this is going more uh, into the violet region. Of course, no, no bright greens. Yeah, voila. Very muted greens, of course. And, but very warm oranges and earth. I think for uh, for a landscape, if you use these three uh, colors, you can paint almost everything, unless you need a very a very strong and bright green. Uh, on these days, I'm studying. Uh, besides my my mainstay green, which is jadeite green, which is strong such uh, as um, as strong as a uh, phthalo blue almost but it, it is another story and i am uh, studying two greens which are green apatite which have a very good granulation and the transition from green to, to brown And you can see it better this when it is drying and better, better again if you use a more texture uh, paper. And another very useful for landscape is the threading for landscape is uh, uh, serpentine green, which also has 
this uh, variation from green to brown to light brown when it dries. But John showed this many times this these two colors. See, you see what fantastic granulation. I used this uh, on, a, on a recent work of mine. You see the granulation. The granulation helps to make very inter interesting textures without doing anything. You just wet the paper, you, you give a stroke of color uh, and you wait uh, and it dries to a very earthy, uh, shade, let's say. For cloud shades, it's very useful, useful to have um, some blue before as an underpainting, some blue like French ultramarine or sodalite also, then paint over and you have uh, an area which is uh, which have the sun, and an area which is in almost full shape. This is this is bigger. I, I can show all together. You see, when when the paper is more texture, like this is Fabriano Artistico uh, rough. You see, you see the effect, the effect of the, the color, the granulating color, and the, the texture, very strong texture. Of the paper. I also, when John introduced the gray titanium, I also tried to mix my main colors uh, with the titanium gray. And it gave very interesting effects because uh, some colors granulated uh, more, more than normal. And uh, it gave, it gave uh, titanium gray gave uh, like a smoky on the hazy, hazy look on every, on every color. This is nickel as a yellow plus the titanium gray every. Uh, hematite genuine, which is much grayer. Piemontite, which is a wonderful earthy red, which becomes more, more paler. Uh, Goetite, uh, sodalite, but I suppose it was lunar black. Kingman green, turquoise green. Telo blue, red shade. Indian throne blue. French ultramarine. You see the, the hazy shades you can have mixing with the titanium gray. You can also have a similar effect with uh, with buff titanium, but I prefer I prefer very much gray titanium, which is stronger and it's more more neutral. It it has no almost no yellow in it. Vertebral blue, which is a very very good blue very, very brilliant blues, more than cobalt, a little greenish, at least very, very uh, bright. Lunar black and the titanium gray, with splendid granulations, and lunar earth with gray. Cascade green, which is uh, super with the... Uh, Cascade green, in fact, is two uh, color uh, mixed, uh, uh, combined color uh, and becomes almost three with uh, together with titanium. Blue appetite with a very muted effect with titanium. Pyrrol, pyrrol scarlet, which is very which is very bright. With titanium gray, it becomes a very, very pale coral red and hazy coral red. The same for Aussie red gold, which uh, it becomes very less strong. Lavender, which I don't use very much in, in 
effect, uh, Italian burns Siena, which is, becomes very, very muted, and lapis lazuli, genuine with uh, with gray, but you know that lapis lazuli is a very weak color, so so titanium uh, overrides it in some way. So now it is the first sketch is dry, and you can see how how the three colors mix together. It is very very, very interest, interesting gray. Sometimes uh, you need uh, another kind of uh, triad, which is not uh, yellow or something which is very similar to yellow, uh, uh, so-called red and so-called blue, but sometimes you can have a, um, a fake monochrome uh, triad, which is the last, which is my last line, and mixing, mixing bronzite genuine. which is very good, not yellow. And it sparkles usually, but I, I think you can you can see, see from, from the camera. And uh, Lunar Earth, which is uh, not red. and lunar black, which is not blue. And of course, this, these three colors give uh, something like monochrome mix. And you can have very, very interesting shades and tints of gray. So these three together, very diluted, give something like titanium gray. In fact, here titanium looks a little yellower than this mix. But when you, if you put together, uh, not together, here with titanium, you see this is from the ultimate uh, 15 colors palette. This is buff titanium. So if you if you want to do a very little sketch, almost monochrome. This 
This is pure water, pure lunar black. This is pure lunar earth. And some sparkle given by bronzite, pure bronzite. Of course, this is not monochrome, but you can add, maybe when it is a little drier, you can add some lunar black wash, very diluted wash. And you see you lose, you lose the, the red tone. Che traio useresti per un paesaggio notturno? Per un for a nightly a nightly landscape? Yes. I would I would use uh, indigo or um, paints gray, blue 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 paints gray. I can show some if you want. I don't remember exactly, but it is uh, French ultramarine, uh, paints gray, and uh, some red, maybe uh, burnt sienna, I suppose. This gives very, very muted darks. And I lifted the, the, the moon with paper. Paper and, and coin. And you can see also here, you can see, I hope, the, the granulation of, of indigo and, and the uh, burnt sienna, if I remember well. Indigo and pens gray are very uh, fine for, uh, for night. We can also try uh, soda light. This is another. This was, was a wash of indigo covering the moon also. And this is sunset. Brighter, of course. When we try uh, another one using soda light, in uh, during John's meetings, I I often recommended to use uh, uh, mountain matter natural sienna. which gives very good yellows. We could use, uh, let's say, fairly maroon or red. And my, my usual triad is uh, uh, together with Indian Throne Blue, this one. No, l'ho fatta, l'ho detto. I, um, I made the moon with uh, paper and a little coin. 
stamping. You want to see? So, Raffaele? Yes? Do you have time for questions and answers? We have lots of questions from the viewers. Uh -huh. Yes. One of the questions, Hans asked this, it was, how much color theory is involved in creating triads? How much colors? How yes. Much, you name. How, how much color theory is involved in creating the triad? Quanta teoria del colore c'è dietro tutto questi triad? It is, uh, there is very much theory and uh, very much trial and error, of course. <laughs> Um, it is something you do studying theory and uh, see, studying the, the very char characteristics of, uh, of, of each color. And then it's a matter of, of trying and seeing, uh, look, look uh, what happens, you know? You make everything look so easy. Of course it is, it is important to, to see um, the, the components, the ingredients of, of, uh, of each color. I usually prefer uh, to use um, mono pigment colors like like this, in fact, which is uh, natural sienna, perylene maroon, and Indian green blue, or or uh, southern light. Also the light or uh, blue appetite, but uh, yes, in fact, I I am uh, I'm very fond of trying new colors of this, of studying the properties of it, of each colors and to and try to exploit their very their very properties. Excellent. Then you must not be slave to to theory. In fact, you may uh, you you must say something something uh, you you need to say you want you want to say and uh, and try to to get to the to the right atmospheres. In fact, when I when I choose a, a color triad, I I try to to feel to understand. Uh, if if the slide will give me the uh, an approximation to 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 real colors in the nature uh, so if you if you use uh, this kind of triad you can make a, a cool a cool uh, landscape you you simply can't So one could also uh, try to use um, this is this is very bright. You can use the muted ones as the and use this, but you can also mix two triads. So if you have this this kind of triad, you put together. Uh, for example, goitite as a yellow, perling maroon more diluted. Raffaele, how long have you been painting? And blue appetite. Yeah, you you can understand how how many things you can you can reach you can you can make by mixing by mixing. Ti chiedo da quanto tempo dipingi e da quanto tempo sei diventato più professionale? Well, I paint from uh, when I was five. Uh, seem to remember <laughs> and uh, then I, I was a teacher of uh, literary matters uh, but I also painted all, all my life and I, I discovered watercolor in um, at the beginning on the beginning of the 90s 
so let's say almost almost 30 years and um, i don't know if i am professional but <laughs> very good one never one never sees to uh, to to study and i feel one uh, a painter is always uh, a child and always uh, a student so and, and since studying is uh, very interesting and funny you make it look very easy i don't know if it is easy but funny for sure so if you have, that... yes no, go ahead please didn't catch it? No, finish your thought. No question. Another question? No. Does, do any of the viewers that are watching have a question for Raffaele? Gabriel? Yes. Uh, what is your favorite triad? And what is your favorite subject to paint? My favorite subject is uh, landscape, of course. And uh, my favorite trade, it's uh, the one I showed you before, which is a natural sienna, a burnt sienna, or, or red earth, and uh, cobalt or French ultramarine. I, I see I can paint uh, almost all, uh, all landscape uses, using this, these three colors. It gives a very English let's say very English uh, look and, uh, and the atmosphere to, to landscapes, but I, I don't like very, very much the, the very bright ones. I, I do sometimes, uh, as you saw, like this. But these are not my usual colors, nor these, not these. And why do you prefer granulation? Yes, I, I, I try to, to use always uh, colors which have a strong granulation. Also, if, uh, if I am using, uh, I, I never use uh, um very very smooth paper which is good for for botanic works um they always use uh, medium medium grain paper not paper and uh, and rough paper these are the color the, the colors and the, the mixes you can do for typical summer uh, italian landscape these are my my colors, I would say. This, uh, this is very strange because it was become, uh, becoming uh, dark and the, this shadow, this, and the, the only bright were the, the upper mountains and this is all shadow, which resembles a little like the, the color we would like moon glow. I, mean, I, I did moon glow by mixing my my colors. I think I used about four, four or five colors again, not, not more than these. Excellent. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay, with that, Raphael, I wanted to thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for giving um, your decades of experience to the people watching. Thank you. Um, do you have a website that you would you'd like the viewers to go to to see your work or would you want to mention that right now? Website? Yes. I have not a website. Okay. I, I have a, a personal page on, um, on Facebook, on my name, uh, Raffaele Ciccaleni. Mm. Excellent. So if any yeah. of you have questions, you can go to Raffaele's uh, Facebook page. Um, he's very sharing. He's a master of the, of the triads. Um, your time with us today is very, very appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I, can I add 
that uh, I have many many groups I, I created on Facebook. Absolutely, I many many of you know them, uh, which is Aquarello Lab, Montorano, which is my town. Uh, Working Mod Palace, which is um, which is uh, based uh, about uh, colors and palettes. Eating brushes, which is about uh, brushes, color trials, of course, uh, paper for watercolor, pastel art. Uh, they are about ten, and <laughs> and they have about uh, um, one thousand uh, members or or so uh, that joined that uh, made me the honor to to join in. Excellent. Can you show the card over one more time and hold it to the camera? That way we can take an image of it. And we'll actually post that as well, Rafael. Turn the card over to one more time, read the names. The, just show the camera the names. The names? Yeah, turn your card over. Yes. No, yeah, for, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is yeah, Oriolin. Oriolin. Yeah, gira, gira. Vuole sapere i nomi dei gruppi Facebook. Ah, i nomi dei gruppi? But you, you can write me at Raffaele Ciccaleni on Facebook. I will be glad to, to send you the links to all, to all the groups. The, the main is Aquarello Lab, Monturano. Uh, then I, I, I will write the, all, the, all the names. They are about 10 or more. I don't, don't remember how many. Fantastic. Okay, is this okay? That's okay, absolutely. Okay. Fine. Okay, Rafael, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Very you for, for watching. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining bye -bye. today. See you Bye, next thank you. Thank you, bye. Rafael, see you next year in Italy.